The first land plants that we're going to consider are bryophytes. To me, it's so much easier to keep track of these things if we have a, a cladogram to keep track of them upon. So let's go back, and we know that we're going to deal with mosses, but let's just do the green plants clade. And I'm going to have the algae be my terminal or my end group. This is actually called the out group. And I'm going to tell you that all these guys have chloroplasts. So this is the characteristic that, that unites all land plants. And remember, algae definitely has some single-celled protists in the group. There are also multicellular algae, so not all of them are single-celled. Okay, so one of the characteristics that's going to unite everybody that follows here is that um, everybody from this point on is multicellular. And the first group we're going to consider are the bryophytes or mosses. Bryophytes or mosses. Now here's the deal. Some characteristics of bryophytes. First of all, I'm not going to build out the rest of the cladogram until we get to the other critters. So we know that bryophytes are, are mosses, but brace yourself. When you look at this moss, I mean, first of all, you've probably seen this moss in Humboldt County. Like, it's all over the place. The part that's green and big that you see, that's actually the gametophyte. That's the gametophyte haploid moss critter. And guess what these things are? The little, like, rocket-looking ship, spiky things that are, those are the sporophytes. So in mosses, the bulk of the plant that you are familiar with is actually a gametophyte. It's actually a haploid critter. The sporophyte is just, it's really, truly a reproductive thing. And, and it's um, only responsible for, Make, going through meiosis and making spores that are going to grow into more mosses, which are your gametophytes. So you can see both generations in this image of this moss. Mosses must be in water, they, or they must be somewhere moist because they do not have water tubes like blood vessels. They don't have any kind of tubing to, to carry water through their bodies which means that water has to come in from the outside. Water has to diffuse into the plant. This means that it needs to be in a moist environment, and it also needs um, to be a small, relatively small plant. It can't get too huge because it, you, it would take too long to diffuse water through a big structure. Now, um, I think, what else do I need to tell you about them? Yeah, yeah. They must have water to make their babies. They don't have any kind of strategy. Basically, they need some kind of rain, splash, something to move their spores and their gametes around for, so that they can combine with other critters. So they don't have any methods to um, make baby making happening happen other than just uh, putting their gametes together in a watery mixture. All right, that tells you some places that we would expect to see mosses, right? Our next group says, this is bold, Dookie. We don't want to be stuck in the water. We want to get some, we want to do something different with our lives. And so this next group actually gets water tubes. 